Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Acres. So today we're going to be building something that every workshop needs. It's something that I definitely need, especially taking apart and breaking down everything on the Alice Chalmers tractor. And that is a heavy duty vice stand. Um, I want to build this where it is anchored to the concrete and I don't have to worry about the vise moving around on me like it would be if I put it on a workbench. I wanna be able to use like a three foot cheater bar on this and I know it's gonna stay in place. So um, I've already got some of my material cut out so let me show you what we're gonna be making this out of. So the main part of the stand is gonna be made out of this. This is three and a half inch square tube. It is quarter inch thick. It's actually the same material that I made the legs out of for this welding table. So this is 36 inches long, and then by the time we get this all put together, I think the jaws of the vise are gonna be somewhere around 46 inches high. That's about the bottom of my rib. And I think that'll be like the perfect height to be able to really pull on something. So the bottom of this is gonna be, this is 3 8 inch plate, and it is um, 12 inches square. And this is what we're gonna bolt to the floor. And then the top is 3 8 plate, nine inches square and this is what we're gonna bolt the vise to. Now there's also gonna be some gussets and stuff on here that's gonna be able to strengthen this all up when we're done. But before I go any farther, I actually need to drill out the holes for the vise, and then I need to drill out the holes for the anchors in the concrete. So this vise is actually Harbor Freight's new vise. This is a Doyle vise, and it's kind of their new high-end Vice. This isn't made out of cast iron like their old vices were. So this Doyle vice is made out of ductile iron. It's actually the same material as a Wilton vice is made out of. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this is as good as a Wilton vice. I'm just saying it's the same material. It's way better than cast iron. Cast iron will break if you get rough with it. So I'm definitely willing to give this vise a shot and see how it works out. I think I'm gonna use the drill press for the holes. So I gotta take the cross slide vise off. And this is a new tool I picked up the other day. I know that um, Nipex makes really good tools, but see these are actually, they're like a, I don't know, like a plier's crescent wrench. So pretty cool. All right, five eighths holes. I need to figure out exactly how many holes to put in the floor. I'm thinking like eight. I don't know. I really want it secure. So I think I'm gonna have gussets actually come off the corners and weld right here in this corner to make it stronger. So if I have gussets diagonal, I'm thinking maybe a bolt here and a bolt there on each side. Total of eight. That may be too close together. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll just end up putting one bolt in each side, total of four bolts, and we'll see how it does.
All right, time to go ahead and start welding this up. So we're going to go ahead and cut some gussets. Well, I'll get these cleaned up a little bit and then we'll weld them on. So these are the gussets that's going to go under the vise. And they'll probably just go on something like that. I'll just have to cut the end off where it's sticking out. We'll make some bigger gussets for the base. Helps when you wear your glasses, you can actually see. All right, I think I've got this all welded up, so let's see if we can get it painted. So yesterday before I started filming, I was trying to get everything ready. So I cut out the square pieces of plate. So I've got this 12 inch wide plate that's like 10 feet long, way too heavy to pick up. So um, I was cutting it out on the ground and uh, I was using a seven inch grinder, seven inch cutting wheels. And uh, I cut out two pieces and then I took the smaller piece, I put it on the welding table to get it down to a nine inch square. And now I'm at a higher elevation not really paying attention, just trying to get everything ready. And I start throwing all the sparks back at me. So all the sparks are coming back from this cutting wheel and they're hitting me right above my right pocket, right around my waistline. And uh, what ended up happening was I couldn't feel it. I couldn't feel it at all. Um, I was wearing insulated bibs. I had too many layers on. I just couldn't feel sparks hitting me. And uh, it ended up catching my bibs on fire. So um, let's see if I can hold this up. But it burnt all the way through my bibs. It burnt through my sweatshirt pocket. I was wearing a Carhartt sweatshirt just like this. It burnt a hole through the sweatshirt pocket, 
didn't go all the way through the next layer, didn't go through my t-shirt. I had, like I said, I had several layers on. And, um, you know, luckily, uh, I think the, the good thing about all of this was is that I was wearing denim. You know, I don't, I'm not going to say this is the right material to wear. This isn't fire resistant. This isn't a leather apron. Uh, but I think denim seemed, it seemed to really be where it didn't want to burn, right? So I think it's a good thing I was wearing denim uh, on the outside for sure. And um, because it only had like a one inch flame on there. I mean, it just seemed like it was just smoldering. It didn't really act like it wanted to just burn. So I think it's really good that I was wearing denim. Like I said, I'm not going to say this is the right thing to wear, but it's better choice than a lot of other things. And um, I, like I said, I never felt a thing. All I did was smell the smoke. And I look down, and I see a little bit of smoke coming off of me, and I kind of step back and look. And like I said, there's just a little bit of flame. And I'm, my clothes are smoldering a little bit. And then I was able to just pat it out with my leather gloves that I was wearing. So no, nothing bad happened. I did share that picture of that on Instagram and Facebook, so I just wanted to explain that a little bit further on what ended up happening. Um, I really do hate that I ruined my favorite set of bibs. This is what I normally wear all winter long um, since they're insulated. And now i got to either put a really big patch in here or i got to find me another set of bibs. Anyway, just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, definitely got to pay better attention when I'm using the grinder where I'm throwing those sparks. Well, it's not really tacky anymore. It hasn't been a day yet, but I think I'm going to go ahead and get it anchored to the floor. So I think I want the vise to be just to the side of the garage door. That way I can still drive in and out. It won't be in the way. I'm going to space this out from the wall pretty far. So I think about 32 inches to the center of the stand. And um, it's got two reasons for that. One is so that I can actually work on it from all four sides. And then the other, if I have toolboxes or drill press or bandsaw or some kind of tools along here, it's going to stick out farther and I can clamp something in here this direction that's really long and not have to worry about hitting any of those things. So I think right there is going to be a good spot. All right, just going to make sure that it's square to the wall. And now we'll just mark these holes. Go ahead and drill out my concrete. I'm going to go fairly deep for these anchors. All right, we're going to get our vacuum going. Well, I was on my last hole and I smoked my drill. Um, it just started, smoke started coming out of it. I noticed it was slowing down on me. It just seemed like it was doggy. And I checked the battery a few times and it still had charge, but uh, yeah, it's not smoking now, but it had smoke coming out of here. So um, I guess I should have let it cool down. That's two things I've smoked now. I've smoked my drill and I, and I ended up ruining my bibs. So far this vice stand, has been a costly project. So I've got this old corded drill and um, it's pretty much been retired because it's worn out as well and uh, doesn't work very good. But I just have one more hole. Hopefully this will finish it up. So I think running the vacuum sweeper, trying to collect that dust actually helped pull in some of those fumes off of that drill. And I didn't realize it was starting to get hot and smoke, but uh, I don't know. Just the way it goes. Well, that one actually did better at hammer drilling, but when you run it, it's a rough sound and you can feel all the vibration in there. That is like bad bearings in there. Very rough sounding drill, but it does still hammer drill pretty good. So I'm gonna try to get as much dust out of these holes as possible. So I'm gonna use a combination of a vacuum and an air gun. So at work we use epoxy 
to hold anchors in. So I've got some epoxy, especially for anchors, and that's what we're going to use. I just need to cut these off about two inches because they're a little long. Now that looks a little bit better, not quite as tall. Now I got to do a test fit. Make sure I can get it over these. Hey, look at that. I think that will work. So what I'm using is some redhead concrete anchor adhesive. Um, it is a two part mixture inside of this tube and it's got like a little mixing nozzle that goes on the end. You might be able to see it going through the tube there. It helps mix it all up. Go ahead, we'll put some adhesive down in the hole. I'm filling up the hole about halfway up. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and set this back over it before these cure. That way they're angled correctly. There we go. Well, it's been about three hours, so the epoxy is definitely cured now. I think it only took an hour, hour and a half to cure at these temperatures. But we'll go ahead and get this tightened down to the floor, then we'll put the vise on. I will say this vise is a pretty good size vise, six and a half inch jaw. I think this will be nice. All right, I got the vice stand all built and put together, and I really think this is gonna work out good. I'll be able to work on all sides of this and um, put this anywhere I want, you know, turn it anywhere I want. I think this is gonna work out well. So it feels a little bit, you know, loose right now, but we uh, tighten these, the swivel table or whatever you wanna call it, you get this tightened down. And this whole stand and everything, I mean, it is, it is secure. I mean, it doesn't even feel like it budges at all. So yeah, this is gonna come in handy for sure. I, every day, it seems like every day, I'm wanting to put something in a vise. Um, and I do have a vise on another table in here, a little metal table, but uh, anytime you try to wrench on it, the whole table just scoots all over the place. So it's gonna be nice to finally have something that I can really put something in here and really wrench on it and wrench on it hard. I think, I think this is gonna work out well. So uh, this, this vise is a, is a Harbor Freight vise, but it is not, it's not a cheap Harbor Freight vise. Let's just put it that way. So it's, since it's made out of ductile iron, this costs a little bit more. This is, I think this is about $230. Now that's pretty expensive for Harbor Freight, but uh, it's a six inch vise. I think that's how big it opens and the jaw is six and a half inches wide. And this thing does feel, nice and stout. Um, we'll, we'll find out over time. I mean, the test of time is what's going to, you know, um, basically tell us whether this was worth it or not. But as far as I know, um, if you go to any box store and buy a vice, like, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, all those places, you go buy a vice, every one of them they have in the store is just cast iron. And this is ductile iron. I know that sounds really similar, but it's, there, there's a big difference in, in the quality um, and the ruggedness of it, really, with the, the difference there. So, um, you know, I can't really, you know, we'll find out over time. You know, the test of time, we'll find out whether this vice was actually worth it or not. But it does feel nice and solid. It's nice and beefy. So I've got high hopes for it. And, uh, you know, like I said, we'll just find out over time whether this vice works out. So, but I think that's going to be it for this video. Um, I really wanted to have this done so I could, it would help me tear down all these tractor parts. So now at least I have a nice big vice to use on the tractor parts. Um, see if I can open this up. This thing, I mean, 
this thing's a nice big vise. It really is. So, see how far I can go with that. Like I said, it says it's a six inch vise. That is way bigger than six inches on the opening. What is that? That is huge. Okay, so it's about six and three quarter inches opened up. I mean, that is a nice big vise. So, yeah, I think this is definitely gonna come in handy for sure. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to start tearing some stuff down and actually testing this thing out. So I think that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.